Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Greb, CEO, engineer of Elite Automation. I just wanted to make a video today going over how to get a job in the automation industry, uh, working for a systems integrator or just overall working with different automation equipment. Now, I made a video similar to this, but it was roughly like 15, 16 minutes long. So I'm gonna try to keep this one shorter, sweeter, and kind of just break down some quick uh, points and whatnot. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe if you want to hear more content uh, regarding like getting into the automation industry, different skill sets to learn, um, and we also make tutorial videos as well to, to get you through some different applications and show you how to set up different stuff. And we'll also do videos like this where we'll go into like where we'll go into like more of like industry talk and just kind of discussing different things that are going on in the industry and whatnot. So slightly like a news channel for uh, industrial automation as well. So being that I'm a systems integrator, I'm going to primarily target around the side of working with a systems integrator. If you ask me, working for a systems integrator is probably the one of the best things that you can work for uh, versus like working at just a manufacturing facility or whatnot, just because the, the lifestyle is completely different. The, the environment is completely different. Um, you're building new equipment all the time. You're building new systems. It's teams working together. Uh, I, I just believe this is the industry. I don't even know. I don't even know like how I could work in a different industry. Um, so a couple things to think about on like the HR side of things. Um, one thing that will be different is there will be a little bit of out of town work, and depending on the systems integrator, uh, it, it will vary. Now for us, we have a longer cycle. So say for instance, we may be working on a project anywhere from you know three to six months, maybe even nine months. Now we have a lot shorter projects in there as well, but. Some of our projects will be longer, and then what will happen is we'll work on that project at our facility for uh, X amount of time, and then we'll go out uh, onto a customer site at a manufacturing facility or food processing, depending on the application, and we'll deploy that system. Now, generally when we're deploying that system, it's going to take anywhere from a few days to multiple weeks. Um, throughout my career, the longest I've ever been on site on a job was two months, and uh, that doesn't happen hardly ever. It's more so a couple of weeks, maybe a month, but it, I would say 90% of it's probably going to be uh, two weeks. So that's something to keep in mind whenever, whenever you're trying to get a job like this and something to bring to the attention of whoever is going to be doing the hiring uh, to let them know that you're not scared uh, to work out of town and be out of town for a few weeks at a time because that's going to be one of the questions they ask you and if you already know that information then they're going to uh they're going to feel more comfortable and confident in the fact that uh you're willing to do that whereas like if an interviewer is asking you those questions and you're answering them um there's not as much weight to your answer as if you just bring it up on your own so anything like that anything that you know will be a skill set or value add to that systems integrator or to whoever you're you're applying for a job for um uh, if you can bring those skill sets to the table and, and those different things that you're okay with working with uh, to the table before they ask the questions. It, it'll carry a lot more weight and it'll go a lot further uh, in the overall interviewing process and, and the likelihood of you getting the job. Two other things that you'll have to think about is uh, sometimes you'll be working with teams of people, so you have to be okay with working with teams of people. And then on the other hand, you may not have any team. It may be you working on a PLC, robot, vision, application, and you're pretty much thrown to the wolves all by yourselves. Uh, now, that could be uh, maybe you have a lead engineer that gives you assistance on the project throughout the process, or maybe kind of like an intern type of thing, and you're just thrown to it, and we have a long period of time to do this project, so uh, we can allot for you to kind of just figure it out on your own, learn learn yourself, because that's the best way to learn. Majority of my career, I've been just thrown to the wolves, and, and I mean, as soon as I got into programming, that's how it was for me. Like, I. I've had very little direction. It was like I had to be stuck on something for like hours or days before I, I went to another engineer and asked them for their assistance. Uh, so those are a couple things that you have to be okay with. Um, and, and I like both aspects of it. I love working with the team and I love figuring a project out on my own just because uh, there's a lot of validation behind it. And, and it's also awesome working with people and working with a crew to develop a, a bigger system. Another big skill set to have is going to be working through systems, being able to troubleshoot, uh, because everything we're doing is a process. So it's, this happens, then this happens, then this other thing happens, uh, and so you got to kind of have that that process in your head going always. Like doing this type of work has kind of rewired my brain to think of everything as a process because. Uh, Whenever it comes to like programming a system, if you don't think dut, 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 
and your programming, then what's going to happen is you're going to have scrambled up programming. You're going to wonder why it don't work and why why it goes down two lines and then it jumps over here and does something completely different than what you thought it was going to. Uh, after you have that more systematic approach to like troubleshooting and programming and, and things along those lines, you'll be a lot better off. So uh, definitely have like a systematic approach to how you do things. Have a um, have a good understanding of troubleshooting, whether it be electrically, programmatically. Um, just be overall good at troubleshooting and figuring out whatever issues that you may run into. Uh, that's the big thing. It's like just being able to figure out anything. That's one of my main value adds. I may not know the piece of equipment that I'm working with, but I know how to figure things out. I know how to look at a system and dissect it and tear it apart and, and break down uh, things to like a, a smaller level so that way they're understandable and, and, and able to be troubleshot, troubleshoot, troubleshot, however you want to call it. So as far as skill sets go, one of the main things is going to be terminology. You have to know your terminology because when somebody's talking about inputs and outputs and PLCs and robots and HMIs, if you don't know those names, then whenever they're saying, hey, connect this HMI to that PLC, you're going to be like, well, what's an HMI? You won't know what you're connecting to what. So overall, like if you, if you, uh, Overall, just knowing terminology, that's going to help you a lot. and It's almost like a, a have-to-know type of thing. I think we'll do a video where we go through like the top 10 uh, terminologies of the industry or do something along those lines and kind of break down a quick definition of what this thing, what what it is, what the definition is. And, uh, and then we'll also, somewhere down the road, we'll probably do an individual video and break out each individual item uh, in that list. So some of the hard skill sets that you, that you can learn that will help you get a job will be... Uh, on the programming side of things, you have PLC programming, robot programming, vision, uh, HMI. I would probably say PLC is the top one. Robot's probably second. Probably HMI's third. Vision is a, is a good one. The issue with vision is generally don't take much time to set up a vision system. So if you know vision, that's good. But you're only going to be working on it for probably like a week or so out of a project. And then you're going to be on to the next thing. Whereas like HMI development is probably going to take... Uh, the next least amount of time, maybe you'll have a couple weeks into that, depending on the complexity of the HMI. Um, and then probably next will be robot and next will be PLC, but that also kind of depends on, on your programming structure. Some companies like to program majority of everything in the PLC and then they just send the logic to the robot, and t basically command it what moves to make. Um, I prefer the robot have a lot more control. And, and have a lot of the robot's functionality in the robot, but th that's kind of a preference thing and kind of how different companies structure the way they go about doing their programming. Structured text is also a really good one to learn. You're not gonna do a ton of structured text in industrial automation, but if you're good at structured text and you're good at process control, that is kind of lethal because structured text is way more powerful than like PLC programming, robot programming. It adds a lot more flexibility and you can do a lot more things with it. So if you have the understanding of structured text, then the PLC and the robot programming, stuff like that, will be much easier because you already understand those complex structures and jumping around in programs and things along those lines. Uh, like I said, the issue with that is there's not going to be a ton of it. Uh, some things are, are uh, programmed in Python, so Python would be a good language to learn. There are some stuff done. There are some things done in like C++, C Sharp, uh, VB.NET, things along those lines. But it's a very small amount. Everything's starting to have its own user interface, and you can just buy things off the shelf. Then a couple more job titles that you have would be your electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, uh, somebody who's doing like application engineer type of stuff. So you're overall just like looking at an application, understanding how the systems work as a whole, um, being able to bid that project, maybe a value add. So if you can look at a project and have a general idea of what the cost is of everything, you know it's going to have a PLC, you know it's going to have a robot, um, and then kind of thinking, okay, we're going to need vision to be able to locate this. Uh, that, that to me would actually be a really cool job. If I wasn't like a business owner, uh, I would probably lean more towards like application engineer just because... I like developing the whole system. I like coming up with the concept of the system. It's kind of like, I love the whole entire process, so I can't really say it's my favorite, but I, I, I love that process. I love being able to look at a piece of equipment, see an operator doing a job, and finding a way to automate it. Because there's so many different ways you can go about automating a system, and as you get good at that, and as you keep doing that over and over again, eventually you can come up to a, a piece of equipment where a human's operating it and come up with a solution that's that's cheaper, easier to implement, 
and just overall a better system just because your skill sets have grown and, and you've became that good at what you do. And at some point, uh, you know, that has a very high dollar amount to it because you, you're, if you can cut cost of hardware and engineering time and find like a simple, the most simple, easy way to, to do something, it's the best way generally. Then your customer don't have as much uh, things to troubleshoot. There's not as much stuff to engineer. There's not as much hardware to buy. So yeah, overall, that that's a really good position to be in. Uh, you know, we're always going to need electrical engineers. We're always going to need mechanical engineers. Um, but even like on the electrical engineering side of things, to me that's phasing out. With the way we operate our company, we try to do everything with Ethernet IP, uh, you know, IO links, different uh, communication protocols, which kind of eliminates uh, hard wiring. So we try to eliminate as much hard wiring as possible that feasibly makes sense. And even sometimes it kind of almost doesn't feasibly make sense, but we do it because we know it's the futuristic route to go. We know that if we buy an Ethernet IP laser scanner, we can send all the data that the laser scanner sees back to the PLC and do different stuff with it so like if they want to tear this cell apart and repurpose it for something else somewhere down the road they can uh, so that's just like one of our approaches we and so I kind of I kind of mentioned some of like the higher and higher level jobs within a systems integrator now there's all kinds of other jobs in the uh, for, that you can work for a systems integrator now depending on the company this will all be different as well like we don't do uh, a ton of our fabrication in-house we don't do a ton of our machining in-house we try to stay very heavily on controls and whatnot uh, controls electrical engineering mechanical engineering and then, you know, we still build the system ourselves and whatnot. We still build the system ourselves, but uh, we just generally outsource a lot of that, that mechanical machining work, especially. We'll do some of the fabrication. We'll do some of the machining as well, but just very minimal. A couple of jobs that you can get as a, a low level and like as a college intern, you'll basically be able to get this position kind of no matter what your skill set is. And this will get you a job in that facility, uh, which would be you could do electrical wiring. You could do mechanical assembly work. Um, you could do fabrication, could do machining, could do like millwright type of work where you're physically installing the equipment. Those things are very good entry level type of jobs uh, and they're very good for like just getting your foot in the door. So if you are just now in college or if you haven't even went to college yet, like those would be perfect positions to like just get your foot in the door because it may be a, a company that's like myself that if you came in with those type, one of those type of positions and you just worked and you showed me that you had good work ethic and you're showing up on time and doing all the things that a good employee does, uh, having a positive attitude all the time, you know, those things, if you're doing those things, I'll look at you and, I'll, and I'll, I, you don't even have to go to college. You'll be able to move up and become a programmer if that's something you desire to do. Um, I care more about the work ethic and attitude and, and, and being able to figure things out, have an attitude that you can figure anything out. I can't stand people that have an approach of, oh, that won't work or, oh, we can't do this or um, any type of attitude or mentality like that. Like it, To me, it's almost an immediate, like, you got to go. Like I don't even want that energy at our company. I don't want... And it's just, it won't work for us. And I, I don't know how as many companies, uh, I don't know how companies can allow that. Uh, to me, that's what builds the strongest of companies is having the people with the right mentality more so than anything. I care about that more than skill set. So just keep that in mind. Your mentality, being a hard worker, having good work ethic, those are the things that are really going to get you where you want to go. So like I said, you can start off with that beginning intern type of position where you're just doing electrical wiring or assembly and, and work your way up to being a programmer. Don't even have to go to college if it's something you don't want to do. The downfall to that is... A lot of companies will kind of pigeonhole you and stick you into that position. You'll kind of be stuck in that position. Uh, I've seen that quite a bit, and and you know it actually kind of happened to me a little bit until you know I basically pushed myself forward, and I and I also worked for a company that had a lot of holes in it. So like I could basically be like, oh, I noticed we don't have anybody to program HMI, or I noticed we don't have anybody to truly really program PLC, and so like I would step into those positions, I would learn those job titles, and I would. Uh, even spend some of my time outside of work learning those different skill sets and and then I'd be like hey look I've been doing this thing uh, can, can I do it on this next project and I would kind of just kept pushing myself into those roles so you got to be careful about that and be careful about uh, you know a bigger company a bigger systems integrator you know they may have these teams already built out and so like to go from a, um, a somebody who does electrical wiring to program or maybe a hard shift within that company. Um, smaller companies don't really have that issue. They, they Things are more personal. You can talk to your owner. You can talk to your managers and, 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 and say, hey, look, this is the direction I want to go. And they'll be more apt to putting you in those positions versus like, 
a mega company who's doing you know hundreds of millions of dollars in projects a year um those type of companies have very structured systems and 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 you know to me i don't feel like they're as enjoyable to work for uh but you also there's, there's a lot of handoffs back and forth with that that's another video um but yeah hopefully this video was was useful for you guys hopefully um you you, you learned some valuable information and whenever you go have an interview with a systems integrator uh, you'll 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 kill it. You'll knock it out of the park. You know that's what I want to see everybody do. I want to see everybody killing it. I want to see everybody knocking it out of the park. I want everybody to be happy and enjoying their life. So uh, yeah, if you have anything that you think will help anybody else get a job in the systems integrator space or just any job in general, I didn't list list much general job uh, application stuff. I was trying to be very systems integrator specific. So yeah, let me know if this added value to you guys. Subscribe if you would like more videos like this, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Anything I want now, I bring it to fruition. I'm my own boss now, I make my own decisions. I do not agree to the terms and conditions. I don't ever follow other people, I just follow intuition. Tunnel vision when I get up in the zone. Never needed nobody, did it on my own.